I'm going to be super brief about um, infective heart conditions. Um, no learning objectives. This isn't going to be on the quiz. <laughs> this is just a little a brief overview. And we're not going to talk about um, congenital disorders at all, even though those are covered in the text. So um, rheumatic fever is um, included in the heart disease because rheumatic fever is the start and it can um, rheumatic heart disease can develop as a long-term effect. So rheumatic fever is starts with an acute systemic inflammatory um, reaction. And it they think it results from an abnormal immune reaction to a streptococcal infection. So a lot of kids um, between ages five to 15, they get a strep infection and they have this abnormal immune reaction and it develops into systemic inflammation, which can involve the heart as well as the joints. Um, if it's treated early enough, if the strep is treated early enough, um, it's often, it doesn't, the sequence of events doesn't happen. Um, so that's good. Um, the long-term effects can be rheumatic heart disease um, and it can be complicated by infective endocarditis and heart failure in older adults. So um, we'll talk briefly about effective, um, infective endocarditis. So the signs and symptoms and treatment of rheumatic fever, um, low-grade fever, leukocytosis, makes sense since it's a bacterial infection, uh, malaise, anorexia, fatigue, tachycardia, typical um, infection, right? Um, the diagnostic tests are heart function tests, electrocardiography, and an antibody titer. Um, the treatment is antibacterial agents and anti-inflammatory agents to decrease the overall systemic inflammation. Um, infective endocarditis is a streptococcus um, infection in the valves of the heart. Um, so it can be streptococcus or it can be staphylococcus aureus. Um, Staphylococcus aureus is one of our um, normal flora in our respiratory system. It's not supposed to be in your heart. Once it gets in your heart, it's an opportunistic pathogen. Um, the basic effects of infective endocarditis are the same regardless of the organism. Um, the antibiotic that they use to kill it might be a little bit different, but the factors that predispose someone to this type of infection is the presence of abnormal valves in the heart um, bacteremia, where you have bacteria in your bloodstream, um, or depressed immune system, so you have reduced host defenses. So um, as you can well imagine, having um, bacterial infection of the valves of your heart is a bad thing. <laughs> it can cause a lot of problems. And it can be an effect of a late effect of rheumatic fever. So um, usually um, it includes a low-grade fever or fatigue, um, anorexia, splenomegaly, congestive heart failure in severe cases. Um, acute endocarditis usually has the sudden marked onset with spiking fever, chills, and drowsiness. Um, Subacute has an insidious onset with increasing fatigue, anorexia, cough, and dyspnea. Um, they use a blood culture to identify the causative agent. So you want to know um, which antibacterial drugs to be um, need to be used, and so you have to identify the causative agent. Um, antimicrobial drugs are often administered for several weeks by IV, so it's really important that they get rid of the infection in this case. Pericarditis is an infection of the pericardium. It's usually secondary to another condition. Um, it's classified either by the cause or the type of exudate. Um, acute, the acute version may involve simple inflammation of the pericardium, and it might be secondary to open heart surgery, myocardial infarction, rheumatic fever, um, lupus, cancer, renal failure, trauma, or viral infection. Um, you might get effusion, large volume of fluid accumulates in the pericardial sac, and it leads to distended neck veins, faint heart sounds, and pulses paradoxus, where um, your pulse appears to slow down um, when you um, exhale. So um, the, the other problem is if there's a lot of fluid buildup inside of the pericardium, it can actually damp the um, 
beating of the heart and you can get cardiac tamponade where the, the heart can't beat because it's restricted by fluid. Yeah, that's never a good thing, right? That's a pretty serious uh, get to the hospital sort of situation. Um, so pericardial infusion, you get um, fluid around the heart compresses the heart wall. The heart can't expand to fill. You get back up into the systemic circulation. That's why you have the distended veins. Decreased output to the body. Um, decreased blood flow to the lungs. Um, it's all bad. <laughs> There's nothing good about pericardial infusion. So um, I guess that's all I'm going to say about infective um, uh, heart disorders. Um, it's not an area where we're treating people a lot because it's not a physical treatment, it's a medical treatment.